Brianne? We're live! <laughs> it's one of the few things that is alive in Niagara because we're shut down for another two weeks apparently. So, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I think that what that means, um, sizzling what sass, has to explore new uncharted territory of things that have like we haven't done before. And um, thinking back to Ice Wine Festival uh, several years ago where we made a uh, sweet potato gnocchi that... The uh, customers still talk about oh, to this day. I, I, exactly. <laughs> I, I, and I, I dream about it. I yeah. dream in, in sweet potato actually sometimes. <laughs> I see Carolyn Hannon Smith from the Toronto Star when we did the sweet potato gnocchi with the uh, ice wine combination. She scored it 98 plus points. Nice. Oh, she had to read 98. We were 98, and Rife Winer got 98 plus. I'm like, <laughs> why did they get the plus? <laughs> so, anyway, okay, let's get to it. So, um, anyway, so I, I took the whole bag of sweet potatoes because if you're going to roast sweet potatoes, you're in for an hour anyway, right? So I just roasted them all because I thought, like who can't use more sweet potatoes, right? <laughs> so plus if I go into this much mess, I can make a lot of gnocchi. So yeah. so you'll notice that um, I try to keep things as simple as humanly possible. So this is all about the number one. So you put the sweet potatoes in the oven at uh, about 375 for one hour. I prick it with a bunch of uh, fork things mm -hmm. too first. Then in the oven, I didn't put anything on it, no salt, no olive oil, just in on a, on a, on a pan. And uh, put paint, put um, tin foil down first because they go they start to leak the sugar yeah. out right yeah and uh, so make your cleanup tidy so uh, yeah so the thing is too as soon as they're done roasting and when you stab it with a fork and your fork can go right in and it's smooshy take it out and right away slit it out and let all that steam come out for like the next hour one hour of steaming to get all that uh, <laughs> all that out. So, and then when it, and then like it just comes out so easy, right? Like, I mean, look at that. Like, it's oh, just yeah. so simple, right? And then, so the more cooked it is, and the more, the easily, the, e the more easily, <laughs> uh, that skin will come off. So, alrighty. So I just put it all into a bowl and took the potato masher and just mashed it up. Be um, I mean, you could put it through a ricer, that would be cool. But, um, and that would be, a little, make it a little floofier. But I think that's more important if you're using like potato, potato mm -hmm. as opposed okay. to sweet potato. Okay, so now, super And simple. not everybody has a ricer. And I, I don't have a ricer. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So one cup of flour, sorry, one cup of flour, one teaspoon of, of uh, salt. And do you notice the ones are working there too? <laughs> <laughs> it's just so simple. And just guess, Cara, how much sweet potato are going to use? One. One cup. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just get that. And you got to use your hands. You got to use the hands. And so just make a little thing in the middle here. Let's put the cup of potato, sweet potato, in there. Have you ever noticed that when you cook, mm -hmm. you, you, you do the, the Italian accent a lot? Did Mrs. Pilateri really have a strong influence on you? <laughs> she must have. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was wild because there would be times when, I, I mean, I, I spent a lot of 10 years with the Pilateri family and uh, loved every minute, and that's not a, not a lie. And, um, and I, oh, goodness, for the first eight years, I'm thinking that I had almost every meal with them sometime in the summer times. Oh, really? Yeah, especially yeah. weeknights, maybe not weekends. But um, yeah, if there's time, where we went. So, um, but you see, so there were times I'd be like, I wonder, I'll go through the commercial kitchen going, I wonder what she's gonna make for dinner tonight. <laughs> there's nothing in here. And then suddenly, um, all this stuff would just magically appear from this kitchen. Like, How did she, did she do that? So, especially with the zucchini season, that's when the magic happens. Ah, uh, so, yes, of course. Yes, zucchini, oh, right. uh, omelets, and zucchini with pasta. All right, so you really just can't, because we're not too concerned with the gluten here, we want to keep working this on a very well floured surface until we get it to be pillowy. Yep. And um, so and this is one of the tricks, right? So you want to get all the, that's why you want to like get all the steam out of the sweet potato so it, um, so it takes less flour. If you use a lot of flour, then it's, it's going to get dense mm. and hard, right? We want to keep it soft and pillowy. Thank goodness I made a lot of these when uh, we did this for the ice wine festival, so to make this so quickly. But it, it, it's not hard, right? So, all right, we're almost there. I think we need a little bit more flowers. Just still a little bit too sticky, eh? But you see how quickly that came together? Like, that's just crazy, no? And You're just, making it look very easy, Sue Ann. Am I? Mm hmm. Is that, did somebody say that? Or no, I said that. Is that just you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're almost at that pillowy stage. Um, I don't, and you see, it's, it's a little bit sticking to my fingers, mm -hmm. so 
it's still a little bit too much. And the more glamorous way of doing this is to take your rings off first, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All culinary tricks <laughs> learned the wrong way here. <laughs> All right, so I think we are just about there. It's funny because the last batch that I did needed just less than a cup of sugar and mm -hmm. had some of that left on the on the. No, 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 cup of flour. Because uh -huh. those would be some sweet. <laughs> That'd be sweet, sweet potatoes. <laughs> sweet, sweet potato yucky. Oh yeah, that's looking great. Uh, okay. All right. Perfect. Okay, so can now, you describe the texture? Like that it's, ball it's, of, does it feel like bread dough or like? It feels like, it feels like I want to put my head on it. Like I want to put my head. <laughs> like it, it's just, and as I work it more, and I think you, you could overwork this. Um, I think especially if it was real potato, like you know, russet yeah. potatoes instead of a sweet potato. Um, because then you start to get, it gets really glutinous, right? Yeah. So, all right, I think we're there. I'm going to, I'm going to pretend we're there. I think, okay. I think we are. Yeah, because you see it's holding together. And it's just on the verge of being just a little bit too sticky. But, okay, there we are. All right, I'm going to put a little more flour down just to make sure I've got enough. That's one of the tricks here. Make sure everything is floured or else it gets really, really gross. That might be, actually, maybe a little bit too much flour because it's just kind of starting to fall apart. Mm, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Who knows? Let's see. We're going to learn this all together because <laughs> every time I do this, it's a different, uh, it's a different year. <laughs> so, okay. There's sweet potato flying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> With your flour knife, just cut through. I'm gonna cut this into eight. Um, you want workable sizes for the next stage of this. And if you have these sizes too big, then it gets really annoying. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're going to do and roll out into one inch. <laughs> so many ones. So many ones. And you could be working more flour into it here too, right? And so just, and this is just so light because this is so fluffy, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so let's just work it out into a one inch size. That looks just about perfect. Might be a little bit too much flour on that, but that's all right because it's the first one of the day. And then see the same knife. I always cut this one off because I'm uh, crazy that way. Uh, into one inch pieces. Oh. See all the ones? Crazy, eh? <laughs> all right, just cut that off. Just so they're all, I like them when they're all uniform like that. And then you're gonna take the fork. There's special tools for this too, mm -hmm. of course, but we don't use that. Let's just do this. And you know why you put the grooves in? No, I've always wanted to know. So it holds the sass. You gotta hold the sass. Ah, of yes. Course, I, never, of I didn't know. I just learned that myself. I thought mm -hmm. it was just tradition, right? I thought I was going back to the days of uh, of uh, when we're doing the duck breast, and uh, you know you have to cut it this way if you're from France. That yeah. was burgundy, like the score of the fat. I thought maybe there's a way in like northern Italy they do this and southern Italy they do that, but no, no this is just a, just whatever pattern you want, right? Okay, so you can do that repeat, rinse and repeat for all pieces. Okay. Get that all out. Put it down on a cookie sheet and then come on over this all way, Cara. Right. And as you're going, you're going to want to scan past the picture of my friend, Karen. Yes. Yes, so it's Valentine's weekend and um, what's up? Yeah, so uh, we have the, the crazy duo and... Uh, so it's a, a, a gift package. Thanks, darling. This <laughs> 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 just magically arrived. <laughs> a pack of uh, the Lou and Lavelle, my grandmother and grandfather, Lou and Lavelle, who would have lived in this home for the 40 years before I did. And um, they were married for just over 60 years. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been writing 61, but um, my mom told me I've got that wrong, but probably 65 years. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, check that out. So I love my mother. Would. No, I <laughs> And... Um, so anyway, so yes, for Valentine's Day, there's still time today. We're open until 6 to come and get the Lou and Lavelle pack. Yes. This is one of each for $35.90. Uh, we're going to taste one of them soon a little bit too. Okay, so you want to leave the gnocchi out for about 25, uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So they can dry out a little bit. And then I've got some rolling, uh, boiling water here. So through the magic of television here, they're already made. Yeah, they are already <laughs> made. And I've got this just on really rolling boil here. Did you salt the water? Uh, this is salted, okay. and I put a little bit of, I put, just out of habit, I put some, um, I put uh, uh, olive oil in there okay. because it's pasta. I'm just going to do that much, just to keep it out of the yep. boil. I think you can put too much in, crowd the pot, and then the water gets too cold. Yeah, and, uh, and gummy. Yeah. Okay, so now they're going to boil in there for 30 seconds up to oh, one minute. <laughs> It's like you, you planned it. So <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how I knew it would also be great for this, this uh, for sizzling like with sass. I'm gonna crank the temperature up a little bit again. I turned it down just because it's hot boiling when we're starting. Um, so when this, and it's so easy, when they start to float, 
that's when we're going to uh, take them out. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to put it into a birth butter sage sauce, which I've got just cranked out here. So I've got the butter melted. And so that's about a quarter cup of butter. Mm -hmm. And there is seven sage leaves in there that I've cut in half. Yeah. So let's get that hot. So by the time that finishes cooking, this will be floating and we're going to like transfer them over just to finish them off. And we're going to um, garnish the top of it with some um, spiced pecans. So these pecans, it was uh, it says about a cup and a half of pecan that uh, just pure, it just frothed it all up. And in that froth, I put in hmm, a quarter cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of cloves and uh, nutmeg, and um, oh, clove and nutmeg. Yes, yeah, so that's it. So these are lovely. I would just eat them just like oh, this. Oh God, yeah. I've um, been hard. If you really hard... want them spicy, double all that. Actually, yeah. don't double the um, don't double the egg white, but double all the spices. So. Okay, Elaine that, Peters would like to know if you can use another herb if you don't like sage. Oh, my goodness. You can do so many different things here. You can use sage, you can use oregano, you can just melt down some gorgonzola and put a little, like, yeah. cut up a little bit of cream and put that in as well. Rosemary could work too. Rosemary would work great. Yeah. Um, anything with nutmeg would be fantastic in there too. So yeah, like, and I think that's part of the trick. Thank you, Elaine Peters, from Niagara like for that question. Mm -hmm. um, because the... Um, Keep the, I think my philosophy is keep the gnocchi simple yep. and make the sauce interesting. So, um, yeah, and, and so the simpler this is, then the more delightful this yep. will be. So. so these are kind of good sized gnocchis. Um, so they said 30 seconds to one minute. I think that was for like maybe smaller ones yep. because this is like, this is a little bit bigger than an inch by an inch. And um, so they're taking a bit more time. This is like absolutely delectable though. <laughs> so let's just turn that down. And um, in the meantime, we're going to that too. To, uh, to melt, or to, uh, to uh, float. I have, I, I'm feeling particularly thirsty. Oh, well, go for it. Awesome. So we've got the, uh, the Lavelle's Videl. So named after my grandfather, Lavelle, who loved everything sweet, boxes of chocolates and caramels and toffees and, and women. <laughs> <laughs> he was a charmer, was he? He was a charmer, oh yeah. He was the, like one of the crusty, grumpy old men. And a lady would walk by and he's like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, beautiful blue eyes that absolutely twinkled. <laughs> like, I thought you were crusty. I thought you were grumpy. And suddenly, like, charmer came out, right? So, like, I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> so, anyway, what I love about this wine is it's 2017 and it's just so fresh and bright and light. And it's got, a, it, you know, a lemon and lime, but also the, um, like, melon and granny mm -hmm. with apples and some peach notes to it as well. Mm. And, like, it's just drinking so well. Some summers, I, it's, I've drunk, I've drunk, I've drank, I, what, I, I drank. Imbibed. Imbibed in an alarming amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm. Some nice sweetness to it. It's round. And, um, like, the acidity is there to keep it fresh and bright. But it certainly is far from, um, from being just a, a sweet wine, right? What's the, um, we've got uh, someone who's asking what the residual sugar is. Mm, it's, it's 32 grams residual sugar, which sounds high, but because of the acidity that marries in there, it kind of brings down the perception of sweetness. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, and, and, I mean, this drinks well with just anything like cheesies and Pringles, and, and then it'd be great with a sweet potato gnocchi, but then it's also perfect with, um, like, you can get a bit more complex and have like a, a curry with it. Yeah. With, um, Maybe some like slices of dried uh, apricot in it would be mm -hmm. fantastic, or some coconut would be fantastic. Oh, the gnocchi starting to melt! Look at it! Oh my god, it's perfect. So it tells you when it's done. Oh, there we it's go. It's easier than spaghetti. You don't have to throw it at the wall <laughs> to see if it's ready. Okay. All right. So this could be because we're going with the water right into this okay. the butter. It could be. Oh yeah. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Turn the butter off. I'm just gonna do that a little bath. Oh, yum, oh, yum. Wow. And then, that looks super rich, and it is, and I'll show you what we're gonna do the next. Um, I mean, you could, you could pan fry this first, and then put in the, um, and then put in the burnt butter, but it tastes, if, and you want, it, you want brown butter, not burnt butter, yeah. right? So don't go too far with that butter. So, it, I mean, this, this thing's been on, off, on, off for like the last, uh, well, how long have we been going? 15 minutes? <laughs> So, all right, we get a few of those on the plate. And so, if this is like a, a, like a, um, a first course or a second course, then that's probably all I would do there, is just that. Yeah. I mean, if it was a second, if it was your main, then yeah, you need a lot more than that. Um, and then just crunch up some of these um, pecans on top. 
and just to fresh it, just to give it a little bit of brightness. Mm -hmm. just ah, a little, uh, uh -huh. look at that. Yeah, just, all about the contrast. Yeah, it is. Just to add a little, a little zip to it, and let's just knock that off. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. You know what to do? Yeah. Do that with an orange on top of your mashed potatoes. Bam. Bam. Okay, Bam. I'm gonna have to all try right. that. Four. Okay. <laughs> Not only do you have to stay hydrated, you have to base the chef. Yes. Mm. Very All important. Right. Going in. Oh, okay. It's got good resistance as I'm going in, and yet yeah. it, it has some resistance, and yet it's still like nice and soft. Mm hmm. Mm. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wonder how they do this on TV in real life. Um, but um, mm, you got a little bit of sage that comes through, and uh, that sage and that herbal note that you get with that comes really nice with that. And then you want to do just go for the sweep the pecan. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. You don't need that too. Just that little bit more sweetness to match the sweetness of the wine. You need right. that, that element to kind of bridge them together. Right. right. And that's what oh, your garnish can do is sort of be that little bit to bring it together. And that little zip of the lemon zest on top of it too. Oh, Brilliant. Yeah, delicious. Yeah. Delicious. Mm. I like my job. <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> Life is good. Life is good. Okay, so here we are. Happy Valentine's, everybody. Happy, happy um, family day to read on um, on Monday as well. And stay home and stay safe. Please, if you need to get your wine, give us a call. We've got the curbside pickup, online delivery. If you still need wine for Valentine's, we're open until 6. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Mm -hmm. We're not open tomorrow, right? So, um, I spend time with my own sweetheart. Mm -hmm. And um, and we've got the Valentine's Day pack. This one here is uh, right, $35.90. So that's the regular price for the wines, but then the gift packaging would all yes. be complimentary. So um, so that's that's the deal. Ready to give to your sweetheart, your loved one today. So perfect. Stay safe, everyone. Cool. Be well. Cheers. <laughs>